Hey, 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 what's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick. That's Big Show. And we got another good one here for you today. Um, talking a little NFL today and some uh, Game of Thrones. How you doing, show? Doing okay. How about yourself? Uh, uh, typical. We'll just we'll just call it typical. Um, Did you go vote? Uh, yes, I've already voted. We are the uh, we get the advanced ballots. Gotcha. Yeah. That way, I, I I make sure that I get my civic duty done. Yes, sir. Well, I also voted, so I've done my job. There you go. See, see what happens. I feel like uh, with what's going on in our country today and our show uh, that we're doing on this particular episode of Game of Thrones is kind of just spot on, you know? <laughs> There's a battle going on in both sets. Yeah, you could say that. Um, thought you were getting ready to say we we're about to be attacked by the White Walkers, but... Um... <laughs> Uh, no, that was January 6th a couple years ago. <laughs> so, for uh, the people that don't know, we're uh, going through each episode of the final season of Game of Thrones. And today we are talking about episode three, which is called The Long Night. Um, because of hospital reasons, I didn't get a chance to rewatch it, but I don't really think I have to for this one. This episode stuck with me for a couple different reasons. Uh, obviously, uh, Brienne and Jamie were prepping uh, the soldiers for battle. Arya was trying to prove her worth as a fighter. And uh, obviously... If you haven't been paying attention to us these last few seconds, the White Walkers approached. There was a fight. I'm going to get to the fight in a minute. But, show. what did you think about the episode? Out of all the episodes in the entire series of this show, mm -hmm. this is my second favorite episode out of them all. My first is the Battle of the Bastards. I think in season four or five. Uh, but this one, you know, very little, uh, very little speaking. There's a, there was a few speaking parts, but mostly it was an hour and 30 minutes of action. War, yeah. And um, very well done. Yeah, I want to go ahead and get the elephant in the room out of the way first. I know a lot of people didn't like it because it was too dark. But I agree with the producers of the show. This is how a fight would look without any street lights or whatever. I mean, you've got the light of the fire that's around you, and that's it. So whether you look north, south, east, west, the horizon is black. And all you got is something coming at you or you coming at somebody else and with what little light you have. So I, they conveyed that perfectly to me. I think, yeah, I think that's what made it so good. So, yeah. you know, we're going to break it down, obviously. But like, so the beginning of the episode is everybody lining up, getting ready, you know, to wait for the uncommon charge. And uh, Melisandre, she comes in, uh, you know, out of the dark, riding in towards Winterfell. And uh, she basically sets the Dothraki's uh, so sickle swords uh, on fire. And the shots of the Dothraki herd running towards the White Walker army uh, in the dark was really cool. Like, as, as, as a fan, you were like, yes. The first time I and, saw that, I thought we were about to see some fighting. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, all the flames started slowly disappearing. And in your mind, you're going, oh, fuck. Exactly. <laughs> you're screwed. Uh, so that, that really set the pace for the show, uh, I really think. Yeah, uh, it did. I mean, that was crazy. I, I like that because you you're right. Not only 
did you get a oh fuck moment um you're thinking there's no way they're gonna win this how are they gonna pull it they just lost what 20 percent of the army and the dothraki are known for their fighting prowess you yeah. know so it's like they got swallowed up in less than five minutes and you're like holy hell what do we got going on here yes um now didn't they uh yeah they sent uh a, a lot of uh people down to the crypt area they sent all the all the young kids the old people and then uh Daenerys sent Tyrion down there and then uh Aya sent Sansa down there now the very first thing i thought was wait aren't there dead people down there that's the last place i would want to go yeah but but they didn't know that he could resurrect them like he did like make reanimate them that, that's true that's know? true and they and he didn't until almost towards the end you know when he was reanimating all the people that had died during this battle he reanimated them uh, and then of course that went into the people in the crypt where they had to deal with that as well but those guys were mostly bones i wouldn't even been yeah. worried about them that's true uh before we go any further just for people that are not as familiar with the source material can you tell them about the night king just a brief summary uh yeah he is um death uh incarnate basically he is his whole goal is he wants an eternal night um and the way he does that the way to do that would be uh to take out the three-eyed raven uh which is bran mm -hmm. and the three-eyed raven is uh, basically a seeker of uh, or a, a knower of all things past, present, and future. Um, and able to, so like if you wanted somebody, if you wanted to know the history of whatever happened, that guy needs to stay alive and put it on paper. Because uh, he knows everything and basically knows what's going to happen. Right. And, and also I want to point out that not only did he control the dead, um, if he's to be gone, then they would cease to exist as well. Yeah. Yeah. If that was the only way to take him out was to take out the Night King. Yeah. And the Night King was actually uh, created by uh, the children of the forest to the children. of. So if you go back in the history of, of the annals, if, and I, I, I might be wrong, but the way I understand it is the, the, the human race, the men, you know, uh, were uh, wiping out the children of the forest. And the children of the forest created the Night King to deal with their human problem. But then, obviously, he got to where he wanted to, to rule the world, yeah. basically, in one solid dark night. Yeah. And in the grand thinking? scheme of things, in the grand scheme of things... You know, it's kind of a hokey point in the story, but um, I think the like the books hardly. I mean, the books talk about it. You know, I, I just started the fifth book, which is called The Dance of Dragons or mm -hmm. Dance of the Dragons or something like that. And you know, they throughout the other book they they talk about the White Walkers a little bit, but it's not like a big deal like it is in the show. And maybe it's just because those books, that part of the story hasn't happened yet. But um, so far, you know, it's not really, it, it, it's not the focus of the storyline. But they had to, they've been building up to this particular battle for the last season and a half, roughly. Yeah. So um, I, I, they did it justice, I think. Now, in the current book you're reading, the battle has, the battle has not even begun yet then. Uh, in the book that I'm reading, which is the fifth book in the series of Ice and Fire, uh, it's if if I put it in the TV show realm, they are it's taking place. Uh, basic uh, Tyrion hasn't even met Daenerys yet. 
He mm. is overseas. He's overseas, but he uh so like the fourth book, Daenerys and Tyrion weren't even in it. They he didn't all those pages, he he not once mentioned those guys. Wow. Uh, but in the next book picks up right after basically um in the same time frame that after he killed his father. So he you know, Joffrey's dead, um, and he's he's overseas. He's with Illyrio, who is for those that don't know who Illyrio is, uh, is the fat guy that sold Daenerys to uh, the Dothraki in season one of the show. So that's who Tyrion's with right now. In All the right. book. Yeah, in the book. Um, back to episode three. Um, and it, it, Do you remember how long the episode was? 45 Hour minutes? and a half. Hour and a half? Hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, definitely a good hour of that was all fight. I'd say an hour and 20 minutes. I mean, it was from beginning to end, it was all fight. Because the way it ended was when Melisandre walked onto the snow and took her necklace off. That's right. Um, why did she do that? She could have easily just, you know, kept it on and kept going, right? I, for some reason she was that was her time to die i don't, she, I don't she know she just felt she was through she, she was only there to help defeat the night king i assume you know but the things that bothered me about melisandre is she supposedly knows all of this stuff but she didn't realize that stannis wasn't the king that was promised she knew that aya was going to kill the night king because she basically said it you know you're going to she told her the first time she met Aya, I think in like season six, you know, you're going to be the shutter of eyes of green eyes, brown eyes and blue eyes. Well, we all just think that as normal. Well, then they talk about it again and she goes, I remember you. And she said, yes, you told me I was going to, you know, shut a lot of eyes, you know, green eyes, brown eyes. And she goes, and you were right. And Melisandre told Aya, she was like, and blue eyes. We, I still didn't get it. Yeah, realizing no. that the blue eyes were the 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 dead people. You know, I didn't really catch that. But you know, I've I've rewatched that episode. I, I rewatched it today, but it's my third time actually watching it, and it never it never ceases to uh, uh, entertain. I want to talk about that uh, leading up to it because uh, obviously, Bran, where was he? Is he near? I don't want to say he was near the courtyard area. I, yeah, he was in. He's in the Godswood inside Winterfell. Okay. Um, who was it that was protecting him? Theon. Uh, Theon. That's right. Theon, and 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 Theon laid down his life for him, literally. Um, and I don't and, think Theon was going to. So it, the way I look at it is because. Uh, Theon, before the battle started, Theon basically told Bran, hey, thank you for letting me protect you during this time. And Bran said, no worries. Um, I have to leave you now. And that's when he, you know, did his walk thing with his eyes going white. And he yeah. he flew into a raven to see where the battle was or whatever. And uh, but just, you know, the Night King, you know, all that stuff. The Night King's walking into the courtyard to kill Bran. And uh, Bran comes back and uh, Theon's looking because Theon has just – Theon is the last part of his army that was standing there next to Bran. And Theon is completely surrounded by the dead. They're just standing there. Now, he's killed a bunch of people. Yeah. But they, he's he's they're all surrounded him, and they're not doing anything. They're just looking at him. And then you see the Night King and his generals coming in. And, uh, you know, Bran basically tells Theon, he looks and says, hey, you're a good man. Thank you. And, you know, you see a little tear come down Theon, and then he looks at the Night King and then just runs towards him with his spear uh, very stupidly. Uh, and then yeah. obviously, <laughs> obviously gets killed pretty quick. Yeah. But what was surprising to me after that was little Arya jumping on the scene literally i thought 
she was going to like go for the head. Insert your Thanos joke there. And when he grabbed her by the neck and the, the arm that had the sword in it, I'm like, oh, no, they getting ready to kill her. But when she dropped that sword, I knew before she caught it with the other hand, the move that she was going to make. I don't, yeah, because she's 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 killed two other people with that throughout the se series yeah. with that exact same move. So, but, and then but you don't think about it until it, until oh. this until it's in the air. And yeah, until you see her drop it, then you know what's about to happen. Um, the one thing that bothers me about that too, though, is and he was never hit with dragon glass, so we don't really know what would have happened to him if he would have been stabbed with dragon glass but before he ever got into the castle daenerys had her had her dragon you know flame him up you know and we thought all right burning the hell out of him and the dragon fire did not affect him at all yeah at all so but that blade is that that killed the Night King is the same blade that tried to kill Bran in season one that ended up cutting Cat's hands open. Same blade. And okay, it's a see, I didn't remember that. I, I I thought she used the needle. No, it was the okay. dagger. Yeah, it was okay. the dagger. Okay, and um, it's Valerian steel, which is they say made from you know it's it's the strongest steel i don't understand why dragon fire didn't kill him but this blade did i i don't but you know i don't get that I, either i guess for storytelling and 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 cinematic purposes it is what it is now for those but, that don't watch game of thrones when i mention the needle that's the name of her sword it's a lot smaller than a man's sword she didn't use an actual needle she has a, her own sword it's smaller lightweight it's better equipped for her size uh that kind of thing i see she didn't use that at all during this fight she used a bow and arrow and then she had that weapon that she had gingery make which was kind of like a a staff with a with an axe at the end of it or something like that like a bladed side of it that she spun around and you know that she was tearing people up yeah yeah now prior to that there was a sequence where she was running through the castle walls uh didn't the hound she ran into the hound or the hound ran into her yeah behind the so walls she, when they go ahead her uh her the hound and dondarian which is the guy that's been resurrected so many times he has the the thing over his eye yes, yes um they were all caught inside the castle and she went into like i want to say like the library in the castle and you know there's these dead guys just kind of moping around walking around and she's trying to sneak herself through there um things happen where you know she's bleeding and i guess the smell of the blood triggered them to look for her she throws a book to con to confuse them and she's getting ready to go out the door and about that time the door bust open with a bunch of other dead folks but on on the other side of that was the hound and dondarian which helped her out dondarian basically um sacrificed himself to save uh yeah. aya and and the hound yeah, that 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 was uh, another sequence that I remembered from there. Now, one of my favorite scenes, one of mm -hmm. my favorite uh, s parts of that show, like or sequence, uh, the the little uh, the little girl from Bear Island. She was just a little tough little son of a gun, and that giant a uh, dead dude came in and picked her up. And she was just yelling at him, and he picked her up and was crushing her. And was getting ready to bite her in half, and she stuck her obsidian thing through his eye and killed him, and she died with him. But yeah. that was a real that, to me. That was a really tributing death to how fierce this young girl was, because she was only like twelve or thirteen. I mean, she was, and she ran her. I mean, she was. Yeah, in she was she very. Was she was person. very tough. And, 
she she was she was stone cold. So I, that was a pretty cool sequence in that show as well. Yeah, because I remember a couple episodes before they had asked uh, for her help, her army, and I'm looking around. I'm like, do they have a big army in that land? Do they? But the way she was talking, she she was like you said, was in charge, and it's like you know, if I've only got twenty of them, if they're all like her, hey, twenty can be a hundred yeah. if you do it right. Well, she was a Mormont, so uh, her relatives were, you know, the head dude of the wall when John got there. He was a Mormont, right? He was mm -hmm. Sir Jorah's father, who Sir Jorah was Daenerys' right-hand person throughout the show. Um, so she was Sir Jorah's cousin, Um but that's the bloodline. So they were all pretty tough. Yeah, I forgot about him. But he was at the he was at the battle too, wasn't he? He was. He yeah. he saved Daenerys. Um, that's right. Because her, he had, he was on his deathbed. He he fought until he couldn't fight anymore for her. Yeah, yeah. He died there at the very end, um, right after the Night King. He he basically. All the dead people fell once the Night King was destroyed, and uh, that's when he died. He was on the outside saving Daenerys because she landed to help John because the the Night King had raised all the dead people. She landed with the dragon and caught all the dead people on fire and told him to go, but she didn't see all the dead people coming from behind her and the dragon. They jumped the dragon. She fell off the dragon. There was like a thousand of these things crawling all around the dragon. He took off flying, shook them off. They all fell. And then she was just getting ready to get stabbed when Sir Jorah stepped in front and started fighting everybody. So between the two of them, they fought him off until the Night King. But he had already been stabbed, like, I want, I mean, easily seven or eight times. I mean, he, he, yeah. he got tore up. He's a tough cat, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, interesting. Plus, his love for Daenerys kept him going. That is very true. Interesting that you mentioned the sequence with John because that's who I originally thought was going to make it to the court area and um, take on the Night King. I, I thought yeah. that. And I'm like, how is he going to get there? You well, know, I the knew. Thing happened. I knew even on the first one that once the Night King ra raised all those dead guys to keep John busy, he wasn't going to make it. Somebody else was going to have to save Bran. Because um, there was just too much that he had to deal with. But I also want to know what happened to John's dragon. John fell off the dragon because the dragon was fighting the Night King's dragon. They fought Claude and everything. He landed on the ground, kind of injured, sort of. John fell off. The dragon flew away and never came back. Wow, good question. That's uh, because you only had Drogon, who who, who is Daenerys's dragon. I, I guess we were just uh, led to believe that it flew off to die. I mean, well, you know, I, I mean, we know after watching the series, it's not dead yet, but that's true. Uh, because it doesn't die until they actually get to King's Landing, but um, yeah, it was it was it was it was good. It, it was good. Um, we lost a lot of good characters in this uh, episode. Characters yeah. that we've known since season one. Um, you know, Theon, uh, Sir Jorah. Uh, those were a couple of the major ones. You had um. Uh, a couple of the wildlings that you got to like that 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 pass and then yeah the bi the big guy no nah, he's still no alive. no he's that's still right he he took a few arrows but yeah he um well no he didn't take any arrows because the dead don't fight with arrows uh he got he but, got hurt some kind of way though didn't he oh they all got hurt yeah but not not like major to where you know you would they were all bleeding and fighting and everything, but nothing major in that particular episode. But, you know, and then there was um, the one 
uh, uh, black brother that they call him, um, and not, I'm not, that's, you know, the black, that's what they yeah. call him, the crows or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, ah, I forget his name, but he was the one that always, that, that him and John and Samuel were always really super close. Right. Uh, he was one that passed along with, you know, most of the Dothraki and a lot of the unsullied and, uh, but you know, they, they lost some major people. Um, you know, obviously the young girl, uh, the Mormont girl, she was mm -hmm. gone. Um, Don Darian, you know, people that, that you had grown accustomed to knowing and, and rooting for or hating. Uh, but you know, to me, that's the mark of good writing because if they all make it out of that and you just lose some extras, this is not like old Star Trek where if you're wearing a red shirt, you know, that person's gone. Everybody else right. miraculously lives. So I like yeah. the fact that some key characters end up dying. It, 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 it's, it, it just draws to the realism. Yeah. I mean, knowing that this is the last ep last season, you, you kind of figure that you're going to lose some big people. So, um, yeah. It was yeah, good. usually those it. shows save that for the last episode or whatever to happen in unless the third you, episode. Hey, you know, unless you're the Walking Dead, yeah, nobody oh, save it, and that's no, it. no, that's true. That that's another show for another time. Uh, do you have any closing thoughts on uh, this Game of Thrones episode? Um, you know, just if we, we usually grade it, I'm gonna give this a an A plus plus. Um. It is it is by far very well put together, very well written, very well acted. Um, there, I can't say enough positive things about it. Love it, love it, loved it. Agreed. I would give it an A as well. Um, for you guys out there that just now jumped on the old bandwagon, we will be uh, getting to episode four next week. And if you have any questions or comments, make sure you leave us a, a message. You can email us at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com or on your feed of choice, whether you're on YouTube or podcast feed, you can just click in the comments on there and uh, I monitor all that. So I'll be sure and get with you. And this is also, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, and I know we'll go for it in the next three weeks, but this is where <laughs> the season goes. <laughs> Uh, swear this is when it starts hopefully not and, that bad and and you know really that episode season the i'm gonna be honest this should have been this fight should have been the end of season the season before the long night should have been the end of that season and then do see this season eight right Yes. The eighth season or the seventh season? This is okay. eighth. This is the eighth. So this should have been the end of season seven, and then do six or eight episodes of Daenerys trying to win the throne. I think would have been better in the long run. Because yeah. these sure. last three episodes uh were very hard to follow. Uh this one because it was so good. Yeah, I have some problems with the last three episodes. One problem in particular, we've we've touched on it before, and we will touch on it as we get to those. So you guys make sure that you stay tuned because um, Big Show's right. It is going to go downhill from there. Hey, before we get out of here, I do want to go over um, the National Football League picks. Congratulations to you, my brother. Congratulations. After eight weeks, when it came to week nine, you, sir, outlasted the Rickster. Uh, I got 10 wins to five losses. You were 14 up, only one down. And Ah, uh, the, the very first one killed yes, me. Yes, the Texans. Who who knew? Man, I, I won all of those? Yes, you I did. all those right? Yeah, if you look at the holy ones in blue, the ones holy. in blue are the ones that we had different. Uh, Titans, Panthers. Cardinals, Rams. Two of those four Great. were upsets and they happened and oh, they yeah. were in your favor. So, yes. Yeah, definitely. 14 and one, only the one loss. Uh, so, we, we both have had one loss weeks uh, this season. Uh, I don't know about you. I'm still 
in search of the perfect week. We'll see if that oh, happens this so week. So close. So close. Yeah. Um, as far as what we have coming up, uh, I'm going to go through the games with you here and get All your right. uh, get your picks. Let me pull it up here because I'm working off of three different screens today. Grab my pen because, you know, might need that, Ricky. Thursday night, we have the Bengals at the Ravens. I'm going to go with the Ravens. This ought to be a really, 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 really good game. Um, I'm going to give the Ravens the slight nod. However, I would not be surprised if Cincinnati walks in there and pimp smacks them. Mm. Okay. Sunday, we got another overseas game. Giants at the Panthers. Toilet Bowl 3. Um, Man. I'm going with the Panthers. You know what? I want to go with the Panthers as well because – they actually are showing some heart this season. I don't know if that means anything. Uh, the Giants just suck. That too. Uh, the noon games begin with Patriots at the Bears. I think the Bears finally steal one. <sighs> Only reason why I'm picking them is because they're the home team. No, I mean, I'm with you. Um, I'll, 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 I'm going to pick the Bears as well. All right. The Bills are at the Colts. I'm going with the Bills. All right. I'm going with the Colts to lose to the Bills. <laughs> Had me worried for a second. Oh, at noon, at Arrowhead, the Broncos at the Chiefs. Gee, who should I go with there? The Chiefs will be 9-0 and at the end of the day. This one gives me pause because next week we're playing at Buffalo. Mm. So I see this as I see this as a trap game. Mm. I am going to be rooting wholeheartedly for my Kansas City Chiefs, but I'm going to pick the Broncos in an upset. Whoa. Okay. Falcons at the Saints. They don't have a coach there in New Orleans as of today. I'm going with the Falcons. Yeah, Falcons. 49ers at the Buccaneers. The Bucs were oh so close last night, but not really. Um, I'm going to go with the Niners. Man, that's another tough one. My heart says Niners. Maybe I'm just looking at that Bucks from the way they played us last night. They played as tough as anybody could, and they still came up short. I don't think they're going to have that kind of I mean, game Sunday. They came up, but the 49ers suck too. So it's like Christian McCaffrey's back, though. No, he's not back yet. He's practicing. He's not back yet. That, that's true. There's a difference between back and practicing, but he he's going to see some reps. I thought they said it'd be after their bye week before he actually hits the field. Mm. And really? this being at yeah. Tampa Bay, this being at Tampa Bay, I want to give them the slight edge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm giving Tampa Bay the slight edge. Okay. <laughs> uh, Steelers at the Commanders. Wow, this is intriguing. This, uh, at the beginning of the really year, I'd have said Steelers all the way, but now. I'm going to go with the Commanders because they've got that offensive firepower. I think both so teams the, have good defenses. So do the Steelers, though. I mean, Russ is cooking. Uh, but it's in Washington. I'll give it Commanders. Okay. Uh, Vikings are at the Jaguars. doesn't matter missed, where that game is. It's Minnesota. You missed, you missed one noon game. Oh, I'm still on the noon games, aren't I? Well, you just said Titans and the Chargers, didn't no, you? No, no. I said Vikings are at the Jaguars. Oh, that's the one I said you missed. My bad. Uh, Vikings all the way. Okay. Now the Titans uh, at the Chargers for 3 o'clock. 
I know, and Chargers, yeah. Eagles at the Cowboys. Eagles. And, yeah, they, they should know better. Lions at the Texans. I'm going to go with Detroit. That's the Sunday night game. Yes, it Detroit. is. I'm There's actually two Detroit. Sunday night games, but we'll get to the second one in a second. I'm sorry. There's just one. It's Monday. I'm sorry. I, have I mentioned that I'm not feeling my best? Okay. Uh, yeah. Lions. We're going with the Lions. Now the Monday night game, Ricky. Well, you you missed one three o'clock game. I'm sorry. The Jets and the Cardinals. You know I'm going with the Cardinals on this. Uh oh. Yeah, me too. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Now the Dolphins and the Rams, which shouldn't be on Monday night. Give us a better game, but I'm going with the Rams. This actually is going to be a good game. Did you see Tua and the Bills, the way they played the Bills last weekend? Yeah. I, I Lost in overtime by a field goal. Um, now, is, is Puka hurt still? I don't know. I know he went out, but I don't know what the extent of the injury is. Dolphins in an upset. Okay, you going with the Dolphins? I'm going to stick with the Rams. So... That's our Monday night game, and uh, we're going to see if Big Show continues to have his mastery over the uh, NFL. See if I'm gonna be one honest, of us can go 15-0. I'll be honest. I hope I shit the bed this week because I picked a lot of teams <laughs> that I don't necessarily want them to win. Hey, appreciate everybody uh, watching. Again, leave us a line. Give us likes, all that good stuff. Big Show, take us out of here. We will see you guys Next week, God willing. Hey, hopefully you guys got out there and voted today. Um, by the time Thursday this comes out, you will all know who our ruler is. And um, if you didn't vote, you'll regret it. Um, but that being said, no matter who wins, if you disagree with somebody, just just remember it's, it's politics and you still love your brothers. Yeah. Just because the person that you wanted to win didn't win. Let's not let's be good losers or, you know, uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, acceptable losers, I guess. Uh, if your candidate loses, don't you don't need to be a sour puss about it. Um, that being said, you know, hopefully um, whoever wins uh, will we'll start pointing us in the right direction because this country is lost. Uh, but hey, thanks for watching. We appreciate you guys. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell. So my when my homie drops a video, you know that uh, it's online. And yeah, we'll see you next week. Um, if you have another episode or another series that you want us to go through, like we did Game of Thrones, let us know. We'll be more than willing to do that. We kind of we're, we're TV buffs. We kind of like that. Absolutely. So, uh, but that being said, hey, hug your loved ones. Tomorrow's not promised. We'll see you next week. You guys take care.